Hey there guys, this is Beacon Vacations. Different angle here because I have a whole stack of totes here, VHS, and I know I probably would be able, I can't really turn my chair straight enough. So in order to be right here to grab VHS, um, this is the best angle. So it's going to be a little bit different, but I still think it'll be uh, definitely worth watching. As you can see, I did put a new poster up back here too of uh, Dead Rising that I got from the Box of Dread. And I also did put up on the side here, Wolf Cop poster, which I think is right over there. Um, but anyway, um, I just had to, felt the need to do another video on showing my VHS collection. It just sounded like something that would be fun. I watched this documentary called Adjust Your Tracking, which I really enjoyed. I even joined this uh, Facebook group of horror VHS collectors, which I, I'm really looking forward to browsing through and seeing what other kind of people share the same interests I do. Maybe I could find someone around here in Vancouver, Washington and go hunting with. That would be really awesome. I would love to do that. That would be really cool. I'm even wearing my New World Home Video shirt. So, alrighty. Good to go. Let's get started. <clears throat> so, um, I brought this one out anyway. Um, and I thought, why not? Here it is. Superstition. Now, this is a film that's on DVD, but it's a little bit hard to find for Maker Bay. I also had the DVD, which I got for cheap, but I'm keeping this VHS because I really like the cover art. This is a pretty cool cover art. And a little bit of gore right there. But I, I really do like the cover art. I think some cool cover art, Mysterious. Heard some good things about this, and I found this at a thrift store. I found this at a Value Village here in Vancouver for pretty cheap, which I definitely did like. So, um, yeah, so that's Superstition open the rest of here so we got superstition yeah this whole tote I'm opening up is horror so pretty much all of these next these next few totes are just gonna be uh, at least a couple of them this tote and the one underneath it is all horror the rest of my horror titles over here in Vancouver I have up I have some up here uh, up on my uh, shelf and uh, I have and that's about it and maybe some strewn around in some other storage areas but um majority of my horror majority of it majority of my entire collection is still in storage in michigan i still have a lot here but I have a lot more in michigan a lot more in michigan at my dad's place and i'm definitely i'm going to be going over there at the end of this month to visit and i'm going to be seeing them for the first time and it's going to be for the first time in like five years so it's going to be it's going to be nice to, to see those again. And I'm going to be recording videos there. there. So, um, yeah, so be like be like live uh, from Michigan. But anyway, yeah, I have this. I got, it at a I got it at a yard sale. So, House of the Dead. It's a pretty shitty movie. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> got it at a yard sale. Can't really complain. Wasn't that much money. Uh, this one I've heard kind of interesting things about. It's called Colobos. Another, I think this is a good will find. Um, kind of interesting cover art. I never noticed that before. I always thought it was just a, this woman, but now I notice that there's a monster on the cover. And I've had this VHS for a while. I just now I noticed finally there's a monster on the cover. I'm like, huh, what, what is that? Oh, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, it's Colobos. Film called Man Beast. It's probably pretty shitty. Um, it's a Rhino video release. Um, I don't even remember buying this. I really don't. Was this in a lot or something that I bought? Was this something somebody sent to me? I don't remember buying this. This is insane. I really do not remember buying this movie. Where did this come from? I remember buying Colobos and House of the Dead and and uh, superstition, but I don't remember buying Man Beast. Huh. Okay. I have no idea where that came from. It just showed up. There's another film uh, that's probably pretty crappy called Milo. As you can see, it's got one of those uh, rental store barcode things on there. If I tried to pull it off, it would like rip the case. I didn't want to do that. And of course, a Hollywood video sticker on there. I heard it's a pretty bad movie, but it's for the collection. Milo. Fan of the Opera, the uh, classic. As you can see, it's got those shitty Value Village stickers on it. I hate those. I hate these things. 
Because if I try to take these off, it's going to rip the tape. But the Valley Village, thankfully, next to me, uh, the closest one to me, they've stopped doing that altogether. They don't put that those stupid fucking stickers on the back anymore. They know it'll fuck them up, so they don't do that anymore, which is nice. Which is a good thing. Um, yeah, this is the version of Phantom of the Opera with Lon Chaney, which has a new soundtrack by Wick, Rick Wakeman. So it's a different version of the film. So quality's not the best because it's a video treasures release and they usually suck. Speaking of suck, <laughs> Dolph Lundgren in, in the Minions heard a lot of really good things about this one. No, I've heard a lot of shitty things about this movie. Like it's cheap and it sucks. Well, it looks cheap. It looks like they stole the science department's skeleton and just took a photo with it. Dolph looks absolutely bored. Looks bored out of his fucking mind. That look is like, why am I in this fucking movie? Why the fuck am I doing this? <laughs> That's what it looks like. It's like, why the fuck am I in this movie? This sucks. Excuse me, just uh, rearranging some more. We have another one, uh, Grave Secrets, the Legacy of Hilltop, Hill, Legacy of Hilltop Drive. That's Patty Duke in it and David Soul. I guess it's loosely based on a true story, true haunting. So, eh, I'll give a look sometime. I haven't given a look anytime soon, but sometime. Film called Lisa. Lisa's only flirting. But flirting with Richard is flirting with death. Lisa is only playing a game, but someone else isn't fooling around. This one's actually directed by Gary Sherman, who directed Poltergeist 3, which was a great movie. That really was a great film. Uh, no, was it Gary Sherman? Yeah, it was Gary Sherman. Uh, Brian Gibson directed Poltergeist 2. I don't think this is on DVD. This is Cheryl, Cheryl Ladd, D.W. Moffat, Stacey Keenan, music by Joe Renzetti. Okay. Hmm. Written by Gary Sherman. PG-13 flick. Who knows? It might not be that bad. I don't know, though. From the guy who directs Poltergeist 3. Treat Williams film called Venomous. PG-13 made-for-TV movie about a giant killer snake. Not really a giant killer snake, but just snakes that carry a virus. Or something like that. Snakes weren't bad enough. Now we give them viruses that carry. Great. Film called Deadly Harvest from New World Video. Um, this stars Clint Walker, Kim Cattrall. Okay, I recognize that name. Don't recognize the other guy's name. Uh, I think it's a TV movie. I think this is what this is: is a TV movie. Um, Sort of like the, the description on the back is like, The Grim Reaper casts a frightening shadow upon the near future in Deadly Harvest. Where food is scarce, people are desperate, and calories are measured on a bloody plate of barbarism. Frantic city dwellers pillage the outland farms with a bloodthirsty hunger for food, and no farming family is safe. Lauren Franklin, played by Clint Walker, is a peace-loving farmer who rejects the local vigilantes group calls... Groups call to arms for self-defense. Slaughtered in a berserk bloodlust of greedy appetite. I was like, but when his farm was raided, my bad. When his farm was raided, his crops stolen, and his family slaughtered in a berserk bloodlust of greedy appetite, Lorne charges into action. Lorne Michaels? <laughs> a major confrontation is brewing, frantic warfare fought with any weapons available. This doesn't even sound like a horror film. It sounds like it's, uh sort of like a drama where some guy freaks out and like you can't need to burn my crops I'm going to kill you all but anyway that's Deadly Harvest probably not much of the film but it's for the collection this one yeah it's a scotch tape it's a blank tape no it's actually a film it's Wendigo which I've heard about because it's in the Fangoria's uh, book uh, 101 Most Unheralded Horror Films so it's in there, and so that's why I got it. So I can watch that sometime whenever I get around to get back to that list. 
There's another one that I got with House of the Dead at a flea, and uh, no, it was at the same uh, yard sale. It was like a quarter, okay? Don't judge me, it was a quarter, it's for the collection. Zombies. It'll be a piece of shit. It was a quarter. <laughs> um, this is what I've heard a lot of things about. Peeping Tom. This is a uh, 60s film that was very groundbreaking at the time for being very controversial and breaking a lot of the, you know, the norm. It was, it was really um, from some company called Public Media Home Vision, which I'm not, not really that familiar with. Um, but digitally remastered letterbox, which means, yeah, letterboxed on VHS is not very good looking. But uh, it's for the collection. The Haunting remake, which is a piece of shit. This movie sucks. I think I have two versions of this. I think I have this, and I have like the special edition of this. Yeah, I have the special edition of this somewhere, which I guess has some features on it. You should probably find the special edition and get rid of this. This movie sucks. Thumbs up! Two thumbs up by Roger Ebert? What? For this? CGI piece of shit. Piece of their own. At least he didn't give thumbs up for this. <laughs> the Psycho remake with Vince Romp Vaughn. See, I, I I hate it so much I can't even pronounce Vince Vaughn's last name. Vince Romp. Vince Vaughn. Uh, Anne Hache. Chopper Shot. Pointless fucking remake by Gus Van Sant. Just looking at this makes me pisses me off. This remake is so fucking shitty. So fucking pointless. Freaking there. My Sweet Killer. One of those Asylum slash First Rights films. So you know that they're gonna be it's gonna be a classic. No, you know it's gonna suck because this company sucks. A lot of really shitty low budget movies. And it was so shitty that look piece of VHS cover just fell off in my hand. Such a shitty movie and cheap company and the VHS cases just fall apart. Film called Blood for Dracula. Uh, filmed by Paul Morris Morrissey. Joe D'Alessandro and Alessandro, D'Alessandro and Alessandro Udo Kier. I believe this is uh, kind of, this, is this Andy Warhol's Dracula I think? Could be wrong. Yeah, Andy Warhol Presents. Yeah, this is another title for Andy Warhol's Dracula. And this is a Image Home Entertainment release. I don't believe this is... The, this is not that easy to find. I've only found this particular VHS one time. And that's when I got it. At a thrift store. Um, I've heard about this one. I've heard about it has like a line of dialogue with, Oh, the blood of these whores is killing me. I think that's right in my alley. The blood of these horrors is killing me. Can't take it. Here's a classic flick, Ed and His Dead Mother. Um, the, v the DVD is, uh, well, it's out of print now and hard to find. But this is the VHS from Polygram Home Video. Fun black comedy with Steve Buscemi. Those serial killer films, Ted Bundy. Yeah, he's quite a looker, isn't he? Just, just look at that. Look at that face. Yeah. Definitely ugly. <laughs> Probably, definitely, definitely not a looker. Which is weird, because I remember Ted Bundy was supposed to be some really good looking guy. So, here it's like, <laughs> it's like he's a mouth breather. <laughs> like this guy does not look good looking at all. Like he's not. I thought the point of Ted Bundy was that he was a guy who you know was looked like a soap opera actor, but he was a killer. This guy's like, <laughs> like there's like no. <laughs> he looks like a killer there. Film called Dead of Winter, which I've heard some good things about. As you can see by the review there on the cover. It's got Mary Steenburgen and uh, Roddy McDowell in it.
I have Jaws already on DVD, but um, I'm keeping this VHS because it's one of the original releases of the film. This is an MCA uh, release from all the all the way from. Uh, this is from the early 80s, I believe. If even, if not even later than that. Definitely an old release. Um, I checked it out a uh, recent while back, and the, and the quality was actually pretty decent. Some of the, yeah, this is from 1980, as you can see on the on the end uh, on the side here. If, it, if you can see it without being so extremely blurry well you can't see it because it's so blurry but um yeah this is a release from 1980 so this VHS is older than I am and it still hold up held up pretty well pretty good I'm I'm all for collecting the older titles like really old original VHS like from 1980 or 70s or whatever I'm all for that Here's a Superior Glickenhaus release of Shadow Dancing. It's PG, so it must not be that much of a horror film. <laughs> it probably isn't a horror film. It's probably one of those misleading movies. It's probably some another one of those British cheap <laughs> one of those British movies from the seventies they repurposed and released. It's a film I, I remember being decent, but I haven't seen in the longest time. Man's Best Friend with Lance Henriksen and Ali Sheedy. A lot of things I remember is that dog was like climbing up a tree. Dog's climbing up a tree. Okay, interesting. There's a film called Spirits, and I think the VHS is possessed too, because there's a giant line in the middle of it. It's one of those VHSs where it's kind of hard to watch, because there's just a giant line in the middle of the entire picture. That's yeah, probably okay because this movie probably sucks. <laughs> anyway, but um, haven't gotten rid of it because eh, it's for the collection. You know, it doesn't work properly, but it's watchable. But if I ever decide to review this movie, I'll have something to show you guys on the screen. This film I've seen, I didn't mind actually. Anguish, with Zeld Rubinstein. It's a key video release. Actually, a pretty good movie. Anguish. Or Anguista. MGM release of Shallow Grave, which I've heard some good things about, but I've never, I haven't seen yet. Not the best cover, really. A lot of the later VHS covers just had a lot of shitty cover art. I mean, look at this. This is <laughs> kind of laughable looking when you think about it, but hey. It's better than, you know, at least not, at least they tried. That's what I'm saying. At least they tried to make some cover art. Um, 70s movie. It's probably a piece of shit. But it's for the collection. I know this is on DVD, but I don't have the DVD on me. I think it's in storage in Michigan somewhere. But I have the VHS of Ravenous. It's another film that's on the Fangoria list, if I remember correctly. As well as this movie, which, why isn't this on DVD in the United States? This is a good movie. This is a good uh, horror anthology. Necronomicon, Book of the Dead. It's only available on VHS in the United States and Laserdisc. It's never been released officially on DVD for some reason in the United States. I don't know why. Faust, Love of the Damn, that piece of shit is on DVD, but not Necronomicon, Book of the Dead with Jeffrey Combs. Tom Savini effects, Todd Masters, and Screaming Mad George, Optic Nerve, like some really great effects. Dennis Christopher's in this as well, as well as Richard Lynch, Belinda Bauer, David Warbeck, Bruce Payne. I really like this one. I remember seeing I was really blown away by this. Some really great special effects in this. Good horror anthology. Deserves a DVD release. Come on, Scream Factory. <laughs> Saints Francis Phil experiment. One of the few found footage films I didn't mind because it, it, it ends. Not everybody dies at the end of it. It's got some decent characters. Kind of interesting idea. Not a bad film. Not a bad film at all. This movie. You know, I was looking forward to this because I'm a big fan of Larry Drake, Doctor Giggles, Dark Man, 
Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Really big fan of Larry Drake, but this movie was awful. It was forgettable and shitty. But hey, it's shiny! It's a good uh, old fashioned. <clears throat> excuse me. It's a good old. There's a good old fashioned um, ghost story. Ghost story. I'd like to get this on DVD, but I haven't been able to find a, one for cheap enough. But I'm okay with the VHS for right now. But that's yeah, a pretty decent movie. Good effects by uh, Dick Smith. Apex Home Entertainment release of The Fear, aka the movie about the evil wooden guy. Which there was, there was another one. There's two. His name is Morty, and you can't really tell it's the fear because of the giant Hollywood video sticker on the bottom, but that's the fear. I think the sequel is called Fear 2 Halloween Night. That's it for that particular tote. Um, excuse me for a second because I just think it'd be better just to do this all in one video. Just need to close this tote up and get started on another one. All right. Let's see, it didn't take too long. I actually kind of like this style, like on the side. It's kind of it's kind of different for once. Here we have uh, Firestarter Two. I mean Firestarter. I have Firestarter Two, but this is just Firestarter. Firestarter, the uh, original, the the first film. Um, this is the original release of the film from 1984 so another VHS that's older than I am I was born in 1989 and this this VHS is older than me still held up pretty well still held on for all these years quality's not that bad either I noticed some of the older VHS like some of the older VHS that releases uh, like for MCA uh, home video and a few other ones have still held up really well after all these years. Like, considerably well. It's kind of shocking, actually, how well they've, they've, they've held up. So that's Firestarter. The reason why I said Firestarter 2 is because I do have Firestarter 2 as well. Firestarter 2 rekindled. Um, the Sci Fi Channel original movie. USA Home Entertainment original movie. But I remember seeing it on the Sci Fi Channel. Remember it? Yeah, see, as seen on Sci Fi. When it was originally called Sci-Fi, not S-Y-F-Y, and when it didn't suck, I missed that. This film called The Grave, Craig Sheffer and Gabriel Anwar. You can see I got it from Goodwill, the stupid sticker on the back, I don't want to rip it. Uh, Donald Logue is in it as well, Josh Charles. Saw the trailer for it. it. Looked like it might be decent. The Grave. It's more of a thriller than a straight up horror film, but it's kind of a horror film, so it kind of fits in that genre. To Kill a Stranger, Virgin Vision release. I have Donald Pleasance, Dean Stockwell. I don't believe this is on DVD. This is definitely one I don't believe is on DVD. I could be wrong, but I don't think this is available on DVD. A lot of Virgin Vision releases aren't. I know Destroyer was with the Lyle Azado, was in talks with Screen Factory, but they just dropped it for some reason. I don't know why. This one's not on DVD. This is actually a pretty decent flick, actually. Um, to Die For. Pretty decent low-budget fl vampire flick from Academy Home Entertainment. Who usually release a lot of shitty v VHS. A lot of shitty movies, too. Um, but this one was not wasn't wasn't that bad. Um, remember it being all right. To die for. There's also a sequel which I've been looking for, but to no avail. I pretty much have only been able to find the the um the sequel online. Film called Last Rites with Randy Quaid. Yeah, it's like his version of Shocker. No, I think it's more of a thriller than a straight up horror film, but. Be interesting to see what Randy Quaid does with that role. This film called Death Watch, which I've heard good things about, it takes place during World War One, in the trenches. I do have. I just bought this recently on DVD, so I might do something with this. Um, 
but yeah, Death Watch is a, is a finely crafted piece of work, subtle, eerie, and powerful. But again, I might keep it. Who knows? I, I, I've been open to keeping my horror VHS titles at least. This is a film I love, as you can see in the poster on my wall, The Blob, the 1988 remake. I have this on DVD. Well, I don't, I don't think I have it on DVD anymore, but I have it on Blu-ray, and I have it on VHS, and I have it on Laserdisc. I'd own it on Beta, too, if I could. That's how much I really like this movie. So, I love this VHS, too. The cover art's just so awesome. It's one of my favorite VHS because the cover art is just so it's, it's it's awesome. Can you imagine seeing this in the in the video store back in 1988 or like 89 or whatever? Can you imagine seeing this, man? You'd be like, oh man, the blob. Shit, man, I've got to see the blob. That looks awesome. This is how you advertise a movie, folks, with cover art like this. That just grabs you. You're just like. Go from the Blob to the Blair Witch Project. I think I have this on DVD somewhere. I don't know. Film that I saw a long time ago wasn't impressed with, but I might give it another look sometime. I have a Hitchcock film called Rope. James Stewart. I've actually never seen this, but it's for the Hitchcock collection. It's one of the VHSs that I acquired from my aunt. Who gave me her entire VHS collection, which is really awesome. Like Placid. Another film I want to give another look because I didn't care for the first time around. I thought it was kind of shitty. But I'm definitely open to giving this another look. Lake Placid. Decent reviews for this one. I know it's more of a thriller than technically a horror film, but it's called Apartment Zero. I don't believe this is on DVD either. Another one of those very few Academy Home Entertainment releases that wasn't terrible. With some softcore porno comedy. <laughs> Classic. Young Frankenstein. I've had this VHS for a long time. This is a VHS my mom. Yeah, we've had this VHS for a, for a long time. Got this at Blockbuster Video. When there was still one around. So I've had this VHS for a while. Forever Evil, the original United Home Video release. As you can see in the back there, it's not the re-release, which I believe I have the re-release in storage in Michigan. But I even like the warning on the bottom here. It's like, warning, not for the squeamish, <laughs> explicit, violent, and gore. Don't see it alone. Ooh. <laughs> Cover art's not much, though. I heard the movie isn't much either, but I was really glad when I, I found this at, at the Value Village again. Because one night I decided I was going to go over there. It was a little bit later in the evening. But I was like, screw it, I want to do something. I want to go hunting. And it was actually a good time to do it because I found a lot of nice uh, uh, vintage horror VHS over there. It was pretty cheap. It was pretty cool. This movie deserves a DVD release. What is up with the unnameable not getting released on DVD in the U.S.? The sequel is is on DVD, not the first film, which is actually a lot better and actually a really good mo really good movie for what it is. Good creature effects. It's a good flick. And it kind of lives up to its name, the unnameable, because nobody really names this movie nowadays. Who's talking about the unnameable? But um, yeah, it deserves a DVD release. It's really shitty that this is only available on VHS in the United States or on Laserdisc. Maybe on you know digital streaming, but that's that, that doesn't count. I like to own a physical copy of my movies. Thank you very much. So I can watch them whenever I want to. Lethal Target, probably more of a sci-fi movie, but sci-fi horror sort of fits. Lethal Target. This is probably an awful movie. I've heard a lot of bad things about this movie. Scarecrow. There's a sequel to Scarecrow Slayer. Um, it's for the collection. It was cheap. <coughs> Excuse me, talking about Scarecrow. Maybe want to cough. Yeah, it's a York Entertainment release. Those are usually pretty shitty. They always try to 
I don't know, jazz up their releases by making their tapes like weird colors. Hey, it's bright yellow. Like why? Oh, we'll make one that's pink and blue. Like, why are you doing that? It's just weird. This is a, I don't know, kind of a decent movie actually, and more of a mystery thriller, but not a bad flick. Blackout. Kind of hard to find. I don't think this is on DVD. Steve Rail's back uh, flick. No, it's not Steve Rail flick. That's a different blackout. My bad. Keith Carradine, Richard Redmark, and Kathleen Quinn, Quinlan, and Michael Beck. I always remember that cover art. It's just like, what? The gimp has lost it. <laughs> Blackout. And I, 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 this is another cover I've always really liked because of the way it's set up. It looks like he's just, he's torn through the VHS. He's going to tear into you now. Tear into your ass and into you. I just said, actually pretty creepy. Pretty creepy looking creeper right there. Am I right? I mean, damn. It, 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 fucked up. And even the back is all ripped up. And even the sign. I love the way this VHS looks. It's actually a really cool VHS because it just looks like it's been like just shredded by the killer. I mean, that's pretty cool. Blackout. That's definitely one of the VHSs that I have that really stands out for good reason. Pretty decent uh, Cronenberg flick, Dead Ringers. Not one of my favorites he's done, but it's still a pretty good flick, regardless. Yeah, uh, A Polish Vampire in Burbank. Yes, there's a movie called A Polish Vampire in Burbank. It's not a very good movie, but it's still there is a movie called A Polish Vampire in Burbank. Um, I love how it says SP, standard play. Oh, yeah, great. That's a bad thing. That's not a good thing. It's from Ace Video. I've never heard of. Mid-90s release, 1994. Polish Vampire in Burbank. I love how it's like, instead of Paramount Pictures, it's Pyro Mount. <laughs> yeah, I like what I can find. The, not be able to tell the difference. Screen copy of a film called The Night Caller. Decent cover art with Shanna Reed, Tracy Nelson, two actresses I have never heard of. I saw the trailer for it. The acting is miserable. It's ter acting is so terrible. And I always love it when I get screening copies because, like, even on the VHS sometimes or before, is you're not supposed to own this. This is not for resale. I'm like, oh, well, I have it. So I guess it is for resale. <laughs> but yeah, she calls in, you check out. Probably check out a better movie. Watchers 3. I have Watchers 1 and 2 as well on VHS. And Reborn. Just a piece of shit. But hey, I got all the Watchers movies. New Horizons release. Decent flick. It's watchable. This is one of the first shot on video horror films. Boarding House. From Paragon. Um, remember it being pretty shitty. But it's a good addition to the collection. Boarding House. Definitely an older release. 1985. Another VHS is older than I am. See, it's faded out a little bit, but that's boarding house. Oh! <laughs> Rumpelstiltskin, guilty pleasure of mine. It's a shitty movie, but I can laugh at this movie. I don't know what it is about this movie. It's like it's everything the Leprechaun isn't for me. I I can laugh at this film. I don't know what it is. This movie sucks, but just for me, I can laugh at it and enjoy it in that respect. Then this piece of shit. VHS for Gorgo. Hey, uh, this is really cheap, flimsy ass case. The VHS itself is. I mean, look at this. There's not even a title on it. It just says "Made in the USA." It's one of the cheapest VHSs I own. For Gorgo, and it's pink. Such a cheap VHS. Probably for a cheap movie, but. Yeah, that's pretty cheap. So that's it for that tote. That's it for the horror. There's some other stuff in here that's not technically horror, but it's all different types of stuff. So just want to get through. Want to go through all the ones I have on here. This video will be as long, however long it's going to be. Made Men with James Belushi. 
um, from the biggest action producers of the decade. Think bad, get bad. Okay, all right. That's that's a shitty tagline. Think bad, get bad. Well, this movie's a bad movie. They don't definitely know where, who to blame. Richard Donner and Joel Silver produced this. Huh. Interesting. It's Deliverance meets the Mod Squad. Like, those are two things anybody wanted to see meet. Babes in Toyland. Keanu Reeves. Drew Barrymore. Yep. Babes in Toyland. <laughs> Probably a film that uh, Keanu Reeves would love to forget. He was ever in. Speaking of movies, he would love to forget. It's Pat! The movie! Yeah. yeah, this is this is one of SNL's first movies they made. Was this... It didn't start off... Great, that's for sure. Nope, it did not. Yeah, it's a pretty awful movie. Pretty awful movie. Definitely does, does it lives up to its shitty reputation. A gift I got one of my relatives. All not so great moments in sports. Sports Illustrated thing. A little bit of sports bloopers video. Had some fun with it. I don't mind watching old school sports bloopers videos because I also like sports. I'm an interesting guy. I love to collect VHS tapes. I collect laser discs. I collect beta tapes. But movie posters, I collect DVDs, I collect Blu-rays. I also collect movies on my hard drive, so I do have a bunch of digital copies of stuff. And I also collect books. And I like sports. And comic books. All kinds of movies. I don't know. I'm all over the place. A film called True Crime with Clint Eastwood. I've never seen, heard about it, but never seen it. Film called Fire with Fire. So, uh, kind of a softcore erotic sort of thriller of sorts with Virginia Madsen and Craig Shepper. I believe this is released on DVD or Blu ray through all of films recently. Van Damme flip is actually pretty good. Replicant or Replic. Uh, preview for $9.99. I don't know why Hollywood Video or Blockbuster did that kind of stuff. They just just put the nine ninety nine thing on the back, or put it somewhere else. Put it on the top. Don't put it on the title. That's stupid. What's up? Why do you need that on the back? That's a whole other story. But replicant. So I would like to upgrade on DVD sometime. We'll call Wings of Desire. I've heard about. This is one of those, like, the, it has the same plastic on it that it's had since this VHS was released in, like, the late 80s. <laughs> it's like, you can even, like, feel the weight of it. Like, I, it, yeah. I haven't decided to take it off or anything. It's a Vim Vendors film. It's a foreign film. So I'm open for trying new things. Film called Dead Men Can't Dance. This is a film of Michael Bean, uh, Kathleen York, and uh, Adrian Paul. Screener copy. Which I don't believe this is on DVD either. If it is, it's out of print. For the Michael Bean collection. Big fan of his. Film called Ground Zero. Which is like a conspiracy thriller flick with Colin Friels, the bad guy from Darkman. Not Larry Drake, the, the businessman guy. He didn't do much in terms of his uh, acting. Like Ground Zero and Darkman is all I can really think of he, he really was in. Almost an Angel, Paul Hogan. Tried to step out of uh, the Crocodile... Crocodile... <laughs> could fucking say the word. Tried to step out of the Crocodile Dundee franchise. Did Almost an Angel. Actually, not that bad. Not great, but... It's decent and watchable. Film called Unsettled Land with uh, Kelly McGillis, John Shea. Period piece, but I like Kelly McGillis because I had a huge crush on her as a kid from Top Gun. <laughs> Watched that movie religiously as a kid. And that's another reason why I had a huge crush on Kelly McGillis. She still looks pretty good to this day. Seems to brief some pictures of her. She's still holding up pretty good. 
Simple Plan with Sam Raimi. You heard about, never saw it. But when I pick it up, however long ago I picked it up, I don't remember exactly when. Film called Caught Up. I saw the trailer for it. Looked like it might be interesting. Still haven't checked it out though, even though I like the trailer. Some of these you might have seen in other VHS updates I did in the past. But yeah. Overdrive. Now only $59.98. Oh wow, that's really cheap. <laughs> uh, Steve Gutenberg in another action movie. Yeah, Steve Gutenberg was they went on a little action movie kick for a while. Airborne, Overdrive, all that. Yeah. Here's a film I haven't seen since I was a kid, The Dirt Bike Kid. This is on DVD now, um, so the VHS isn't as, well, not necessarily as sought after, sought after as, it, as it was. This isn't like Rad, where it's only on VHS or Laserdisc. For some fucking reason, Rad's not on DVD. I don't get it. That's an awesome movie. Um, but this is on DVD. It's decent. Decent kids flick with Peter Billingsley from Christmas Story, getting a magic motorcycle looking fly. A Willie Scott flick that nobody talks about. Someone to watch over me. I just think it's pretty decent. Good performance of Tom Berenger. Um, I just thought it was a pretty decent flick. I haven't seen it in the longest time, but I thought it was pretty good. And it's one of those older uh, RC home video releases that open up like this. I don't know, I just, there's something about these older releases I like. I like having them open up like that. It's, it's kind of cool. And they always had it like, it look, look, look like this on the side. And then you could choose. You could be like, I want it to look, I want it to show that, the titles from the poster. Or you could just make them all, all look the same. So it's kind of cool, actually. I like those old, old uh, releases. Film called The Trail of a Serial Killer. Another one of those shiny cases. Oh, I know who it must be from. It must be from Avalanche. Chris Penn, Michael Madsen. They put these shiny covers on like every release Avalanche. Spoiler. Gary Daniels. I did review this. And I was a little bit too easy on it. I saw this again. My opinions would not be the same. But yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting to see Gary Daniels try to play a role where he's not just Mr. Action or Kicks, but, you know, Knock Off, which I have on DVD, so I can get rid of this, so it's actually good I'm doing this, because I wouldn't have known about this, so I can sell that, give it the goodwill. Oh, here's another film I just picked up on DVD. This is a screening copy of a film called The End of Violence, Bill Pullman. Pretty interesting, look like a pretty interesting flick, and I just picked it up on DVD, so it wasn't really bad either. Double Trouble. The Barbarian Brothers. Yep. That's all I need to say. The Barbarian Brothers. This is a Godzilla vs. Biollante. Now I got this when the DVD was hadn't been released, so this was something that was sought after by Godzilla fans because it was only on DVD, only on VHS and Laserdisc in the United States until it was released recently. Now, I don't think I've seen this one before, but I always remember loving this cover art. I always remember this cover art being awesome. I was like, this cover art is so awesome, such awesome. I just some of my favorite cover art for the Godzilla franchise is this cover art. But the movie I've heard isn't really that great. But I like I still love the cover of it. That's still awesome. I, mean, I would I would hang a poster of that on my wall if I could. I love that cover of it. It's awesome. It's really cool. Film called Fists of Iron, Matthias Hughes, Michael Worth, some chick named Jenny Lee Harrison I've never heard of. It's probably a shitty martial arts flick, but hey, it's, it's for the collection. See Matthias Hughes. Probably playing another bad guy. Rucker Hard Flick called Arctic Blue. It's not bad. It's not great, but it has its moments. It's, it's, not, it's, it's just watchable. Watchable Rucker Hard Flick. Definitely do worse than that. Media Home Entertainment release of a film called High Spirits. 
which I remember liking as a kid, but I haven't seen it in years. It's Steve Gutenberg, Peter O'Toole, and Daryl Hannah. It's like a love story flick. The Harvest with Miguel Ferrer. I thought it was a decent flick. Great, no, but I thought it was a decent thriller. Good performances. One of the best organ harvesting movies I've seen. Cover art's kind of mis it's definitely misleading, though. It's not any, it doesn't, have any, it doesn't have anything to do with corn. Godzilla 1985, shitty cover art. Not the best movie either, but it was the first Godzilla movie I saw. It was Godzilla 1985. Until the remake. One last uh, tote, and then that'll be it for this installment. Um, Celebrity Deathmatch, round one. I have some more rounds in storage. This has Jerry Seinfeld versus Tim Allen, Hillary Clinton versus Monica Lewinsky, Mariah Carey versus Jim Carrey, Michael Jordan versus Dennis Rodman, David Spade versus Steven Seagal, and Prince Charles versus, versus the artist formerly known as Prince. It also has a little making of on it. Um, unopened, too. Should open this. Um, Really love Celebrity Deathmatch. I remember watching this on MTV and really enjoying myself. Very clever. Loose Cannons. Gene Hackman, Dan Aykroyd. First time I saw this, I really didn't care for it. So, I, But I'm kind of curious about giving it another look. But I remember not caring for this the first time around I saw it. But I'm curious about it. I'm curious about giving it another look sometime. I always like to give movies a second chance if I can. If I think it's worth it, fly of the dra fly of the, the flight of dragons. Which I might review Tim. R I know uh, I know John Ritter has a voice, does a voice in this, along with James Earl Jones. I might review this whenever I get around to watching the Last Unicorn, which is a DVD Blu-ray. Someone uh, Jonathan Lindsay sent me, so um, might review this as well. Kind of something that would probably be a good time to review, maybe something like that. Well, when I do uh, Last Unicorn, a film called Article Ninety Nine with Ray Liotta and Kiefer Sutherland. I think uh, Howard Howard Deutsch directed this. I, I swear, somebody on my YouTube channel or somebody mentioned this to me like a month ago or some sometime recently mentioned this to me, and I was, so. So the trailer for it did look like an interesting flick. So that's why I picked up the VHS. MCA UA home video release of Hard to Hold. The Rick Springfield movie. Uh, this this is actually a release though that works. The other release I got from one store had mold in it, so it didn't work it was not gonna work at all. The other VHS is older than I am. 1984. There's a Sylvester Stallone flick, which is really good, called Fist. I want to get my hands on the Blu-ray, but this is all I have for right now. But this is a great film, very underrated. Great performance by Stallone. Film called State of Emergency, with a bunch of Need TV Guardian language. What? Need TV Guardian language. So I guess this this uh, this some mother who has her name and address on the back of this thing. She still lives in Vancouver. Why why are you putting your name and address on the fucking now people know where you are? <laughs> I'm I'm bad. No, I, I, nobody's gonna give a shit where Bessie Legacy is. Oh my God, her last name was Legacy, and her first name was Bessie. Hey, Bessie Legacy, you passed any gas any time lately? You cow? Uh, film with uh, Joe Mantegna. I just like that. Need TV Guardian language. It's, it's rated R. Of course you need a TV Guardian. Why are you letting... 
TV Guardian? What the hell is a TV Guardian? Do you have somebody like, like a parent, a parental guidance? Is that is that what it is? You need to put on your tapes which ones need you need to have parental guidance with, or which ones don't. That's I don't get that. The making of Le Mans, which is I don't think this is on the DVD. If it is, I don't I don't know if it is or not. I know the making of Days of Thunder, which I have on VHS, is not on the DVD. Just lame. Jet Nicholson film calls a crossing guard. Never saw it. Didn't really look that interesting, but who knows? It might be pretty good. Noah Nicholson is a good actor. Field of Dreams. I like the film. I don't love this movie, but I like it. That's why I've been content with my VHS for a while. Of course, this is a VHS I didn't pay anything for, so. One of the ones that I got from my aunt, so that's fine. Lone Hero with uh, Lou Diamond Phillips, Sean Patrick Flannery. Joe Don Baker in Final Justice. The strong video release. Cover art is better than the movie. Here is a sci fi classic, Forbidden Planet, which I actually saw in science fiction class in, uh, at Clark College. Pretty good flick, actually. Pretty good movie. Forbidden Planet. Wouldn't mind getting on DVD sometime. Here is the female buddy cop comedy, Feds, which came out before The Heat. And this is nowhere near as good as The Heat. The Heat. I can't really stand Melissa McCarthy as much as I used to anymore, but I watched The Heat again, and I found her being her humor tiresome. The Sandra Bullock was the best part of it. But Feds... Yeah, Rebecca the Morning is still hot and, and gorgeous as ever, but Mary Gross was not very funny, and it wasn't really that funny of a movie. Um, yeah, it was not very funny, not very memorable, and pretty, pretty lame. But not as lame as this movie, which is one of the worst films I've ever seen. Leonard Part 6. It's one of the worst movies I have ever seen in my life. I'm not joking. It is, it is so shitty. It's so bad. It's like fucking uh, Bill Cosby rides an ostrich, has magic ballet slippers, and fucking bubbles and shit. This uh, uh, fucking Leonard Park Six. That uh. Towns of the Eagle, Billy Blank's flick with Jalal Marari, who is a decent martial artist, but he's a shitty actor. Towns of the Eagle. Thriller called Mirage. Ever James Olmos and Sean Young. There's an actor you don't see very much of nowadays. Ever James Olmos. Tracy Takes On. Tracy Ullman. A little bit of segments from the Tracy Ullman show from HBO. Very talented comedian. Or comedian. Hollywood Harry, interesting canon flick with Robert Forster, kind of a period piece, kind of not. It's like kind of like a comedy or sort of a. It's a spoof on a, a Private Eye flicks or um, film noir. Robert Forster is pretty was actually really good in it. It's also written and directed by Robert Forster. I mean, it's produced and directed by Robert Forster. He didn't write it. But he produced it and he directed the film. I don't believe this is this is on DVD either. Hollywood Hair, Hollywood Harry, Martin Lawrence Live, Run Till That, hilarious, funny, funny stuff. The Peacekeeper with Dolph Lundgren and Roy Scheider. Not that bad of a film. Actually, a pretty decent movie. Pretty decent flick. Good action. Definitely worst off longer in films than the Peacekeeper. The Chain, Gary Busey film that I've never seen. Yeah, um, with also has Luco Brevarucci, who, who Luco Brevarucci directed it. Yeah, Gary Busey is the main star. The Chain. 
I don't know what else to say about it. It's, it's called The Chain. That's all I know, and Gary Busey is in it. Wings Hauser flick called Marked for Murder. Also has Rene Estevez in it, and James Mitchum. Wings Hauser uh, is, I guess, a bad guy in this, and Leonard Malton liked him in this one, which is interesting. If he was the bad, if he's the bad guy, why, why is he on the cover? Maybe he's talking about Vice Squad, not Mark for Murder. Anyway, um, well, that's uh, that's it. That's it for this installment of my VHS collection. I still have more to come. I have more totes and more stuff. Stuff on the wall. Stuff stacked against walls. <laughs> uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video regardless. And um, I had fun. Something fun to do. Hadn't done this in a while. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you guys later. See ya.